So this one here is gonna be a little different. Um, I'm not sure why, but they've got, they need this welded right here. And they've made this, this piece slides down over the way he's machined this. I don't know if he needs this to be higher or what the reasoning is behind it. But the machinist asked me if I could weld around here. He already has this pressed on here. So it's gonna cause some issues for me. One, you know, this, this cast material is very dirty when you weld it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it the best I can with acetone, maybe even use a, a brake cleaner on it that's non-chlorinated. And I'm gonna try to set this up and weld it kind of like a pipe weld to where I can stand it up and kind of, you know, go. The back side here is going to be tricky to get around there. Once it's welded, there is a small gap there, but once it's welded, he's going to remachine this. So you're not really going to see any of this. So I'm going to try to make it look as good as I can. Something I'm going to change up here that I've had good luck with is I'm going to run, um, I'm going to run a number seven gas lens. I don't like running gas lenses on aluminum at all, but for some reason I've found that on this cast material, it's gonna give me a bigger etching zone and it's gonna help, you know, clean that material up a little bit better. I am running a argon helium mix on this. Um, I'm running five CFH of helium and 15 CFH of argon. And I'm just trickling it in with a Western Y, which I'll show you guys how I have that set up. It's just a Y, the helium tanks over there and then it's hooked right to the argon. But doing that on this material, it seems like it helps clean it up a little bit. I don't know if it's in my head, but it, it, it does really help on the cast material. Um, the other thing, I've had some comments. I've seen people, you know, make some videos that I feel are false, and I want to kind of clarify that. Um, if anybody doesn't believe me, they can Google this. But when you preheat, aluminum or any material with map gas you get moisture on the surface that that moisture is not coming out of the material i feel like people for some reason think when you heat that the moisture is coming out of the material it's not aluminum does not hold moisture in it um you can look that up if you don't believe me the the moisture is condensation from heating the air around the cold material that's all it is so I've had people say, well, yeah, you, you gotta wet, you gotta, you know, burn the moisture out of it. No, you're, you're not doing that. Um, I mean, you can look it up. You can see that the reason for preheating it is just try, trying to get it to weld a little bit cleaner and being a cast, you should always preheat it anyways. But I wanted to clarify that because I've seen a few videos out there where people are talking about the moisture coming out of the material and, and that's not the case. I mean, that's like saying if you take a, glass of iced tea on a hot day outside that the the condensation that's on the outside of the glass came out of the glass and we all know that that's not the case so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to set this up i'm going to preheat it and we're going to try to weld this and see how good we can make it look um i'll show you guys how i do that
you guys can see there, I'm having to run a long stick out and nothing's right here. My torch angle, you know, there's nothing you can do. You're kind of going in at an angle. It's just what you got to do to make it work sometimes. It's welding pretty good. Something else I would, I feel I need to stress too is if you guys are doing anything like this, turbo housings or anything that's a machine surface, always make sure you're putting your ground directly on the part somewhere where if it does arc, it's not gonna affect the ceiling surface of this or mess something up, it can't be fixed. You definitely don't wanna set this on the table, hook the ground to the table and light up on it because you're gonna really, you know, you're gonna destroy that back surface of it if you did that or whatever it's sitting on. This is 4043 filler wire. I tend to use that a lot on turbo housings or anything cast iron. I'm not a big fan of 4043, but for the temperature that these are running, I feel it's necessary to run that filler wire. So as you guys can see, it's not perfect. Um, you know, it'll work. Back in there, it's a little dirty, but it's, it's what we're dealing with. Now we're going to set this up. It's got a ring inside it, an inducer ring that needs welded. Gonna make sure it's tapped down where it belongs. While it's good and hot, we're just gonna weld it real quick too. That one didn't turn out too bad. I think he'll be happy with that. It's not pretty, but sometimes that's how it looks when you weld these cast pieces. You know, if we could have, next, something I might ask the machinist on the next one he does, if he could have just came in and hit that surface when he machined this back to these ears just to clean that up. I feel that that cast side would have welded a lot better, but it's going to serve its purpose. So I want to show you guys the settings I just ran on that. I ran the frequency right at 60 hertz. I, I like 60 hertz on a cast material. It seems like it helps really wet the puddle out. Then I ran the cleaning action right at 32. This seems to work really good on that dirtier material. And then I did run a helium mix. Um, and the way I have that set up is I just got a small bottle of helium that I ran five CFH on. And then my argon 
I just got it wide in there to the argon and I ran the argon flow meter at uh, 15 CFH. So that seemed to really help with the cast material running that helium and those turbo covers being as thick as they are with that helium, it seems like it really helps get that to wet in good um, from the beginning without having to really heat the snot out of that material. So that's how I've set that up and it seems to work really good on the, on the cast material.